Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Woody Worthington joins us, formerly of the Nevada Farm Bureau, now with Green Our Planet, here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Forget the weather outside, there's a blizzard of points inside the Carson Valley Inn during the 15 million points giveaways. Drawings every Thursday and Saturday, including four 1 million point winners guaranteed. And don't miss the 2 million point grand prize giveaways. It's the 15 million points giveaways at the Carson Valley Inn. Welcome to the Winnemucca Big R. Hi, I'm John Walker. Welcome to Big R Love Lock. Hi, I'm Rich Martin. Welcome to Fallon Big R. My name is Braden. Welcome to Big R Friendly. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to Big R Sparks. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their home. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the heat back on today. Call us today and we'll fix it today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why freeze for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your furnace fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we should really call this a two-part interview because when we started out this conversation, it was Woody Worthington with Nevada Farm Bureau. Correct. And now it's Woody Worthington as Director of National Partnerships with Green Our Planet. But let's start with Nevada Farm Bureau. Correct. Um, most people who live in the urban areas don't realize that Nevada, its third largest industry is agriculture. Would you explain to folks that are in Clark County and Washoe that don't know that? Absolutely, and you know, and speaking on behalf of Nevada Farm Bureau, I mean, it's the largest grassroots organization in the nation, right? And a lot of people are, what the why? What, what do they do? But agriculture as itself, we are the third largest industry, like you said, um, and it's important. We, you know, being, you know, I'm gonna talk a little bit more as far as food deserts and, you know, we, we do have agriculture in Nevada. There's pistachios in Perump. You know, there's, um, you know, alfalfa, there's a beef cattle operation. So there is a lot of agriculture. There is on. onions. I mean, onions, yeah. We're the largest, yeah, Perry onions, one of the largest uh, national uh, producers of red onions, as well as cabbage and uh, dairy. I mean, there is and a potatoes. lot. potatoes. Potatoes, right? Winnemucca farms and, and a handful of, uh, of other, other things in agriculture. And you said, you know, Las Vegas, right? They're... Uh, changing the tide in urban farming. You know, so we see a lot of, uh, whether it's freight farms or hydroponics or any of that because of those resources that we don't have a ton of, that water. Even, that even one of our sponsors, Don Ahern, yes. um, uh, grows, you know, agriculture <laughs> in Las Vegas and gives it away to the poor. Well, and 100%, and, and to me with agriculture, is start to finish, right? Seed to sale. Um, and we have food manufacturing that is off the hook. You know, it's a finish line agriculture, uh, whether it's Starbucks or the pretzel company or the beverage companies, they're coming here uh, to really- uh, Can I just stop up. you for just yes. a quick second because people don't know this. Okay. Uh, Starbucks has this huge roasting plant right. out in the Carson Valley, one of the most beautiful areas. And if you want to smell coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it's a, it's a great smell for sure in the morning. And, and they're the third largest roasting facility in the, in the world. People don't really realize that, you know, uh, food's kind of important. We figured that out coming through the pandemic. I mean, we ship in almost 90% 
of all of our food that we can't produce here uh, from you know from other neighboring uh, states, California or whatever. And that's and that was a realization um, for us in the agriculture industry to realize that what can we do to be more self-sustaining. And that that was uh, one of the the things that we picked up on the transition team with the governor is like what can we do to be more self-sustaining? We have all these you know beef cattle and we're shipping them out to get them processed. Why can't we do that? So we're working really hard at a at a state level with uh, the new director, uh, director uh, uh, J.J. Gokachia, he's amazing, and working at a uh, Nevada State Beef program so we can actually process it here. Yeah, because really that, that has that been rep. a huge battle. Exactly, exactly. So, and providing like a three-tier system. So you have custom, you know, harvest. Uh, then secondly, you have, uh, you know, like a state, in-state, you know, where you could commerce, you could sell it. And then uh, the third tier would be selling it outside. I'm doing really well. I want to move that product. So that's something that we're working really hard on um, through the Nevada Department of Ag as well. Will, as will that drop the price? It will support that, but even better yet, we have a program now. It's Home Feeds Nevada. I'm not sure if you're familiar with I'm that. I'm not. Okay, so super, super um, rad, if I could say that word. I'm aging, sure. I'm aging myself, <laughs> but uh, super rad program. Uh, what it does is it, it enables producers uh, that are doing, you know, crops and red onions to sell back to Nevada. So it's Nevadans taking care of Nevadans. So it goes to uh, Three Square or, um, you know, down up northern that's a Nevada. Big, that's a big food bank in, in Clark County. 100% in Clark County and northern Nevada food uh, here. So w the state will purchase for them from the producers and the producers give back to the, the people that need it. So it's legitimately... Uh, an awesome program and it just was started kind of like an R&D program and now it's catching I mean uh, speaking with a lot of people and it's bipartisan because it's food right sure we all need it left middle or right yes and at the end of the day it's the food insecurity is is really um, the utmost highest right now unfortunately I mean literally in in the nation you have about 44 million households, so one out of every eight people have food insecurities, whether they can't get nutritional food or anything like that. That's 13 million kids, too, as well. So that's something on a Nevada level. There's 630 food deserts, 40 of them are in Nevada alone. In okay, words, yeah. so, so for people to understand this, yeah. and correct me if I'm wrong, correct. but a grocery store like a Safeway and Albertsons, whomever, right. um, needs a certain number of households within their jurisdiction right. to be at a service that area. If they don't have that number, then it goes to another company like an IGA and, and keeps getting smaller until it ends up being maybe your 7-Eleven right. where or you're able to get a banana or something like that. But, but, but it's, it's the population and their ability to spend money that, that creates these food deserts if they don't have those things in place, right? 100%. So food deserts, the criteria according to the USDA is within an urban interface is one mile radius, right? So you could be able to obtain it or, you know, uh, get it. Because not a everybody has a car. And how about rurals, right? right. Those, we can't, for, I, I love the rurals, you know, part um, being with the Nevada Farm Bureau dragging the wagon around um, all 17 counties. They need that support. They're, I mean, their 10 mile radius for uh, for rurals is 30 miles. It takes them to get to a place. So, and you are correct. Unfortunately, the the only places like North Las Vegas, I was down there, is you know to buy bananas at a liquor store. You know, and that's that's such a disservice to people that really need it. So, there's a lot of uh, programs that we're working hard on that to to secure that. So that's where uh, the educational piece comes in for ag education for Woody. Um, can I teach these kids? You know, whether it's hydro products or gardens, uh, something to take back with them so they can, you know, grow some lettuce or have a nu nutritional meal uh, to, to curb that food desert and support them. And how successful has that been? It's been amazing. Um, uh, so Nevada Farm Bureau has is, is, um, been really good. That, that program, uh, it's just more of ag education, ag literacy, where your food comes from, and, and really working with the schools. Um, and like I said, mentioned before, we have a lot of new people on the radar uh, with sure. the pandemic saying, what's this food stuff about? I need to figure it out. I don't have toilet paper. I don't have this because we're so relied upon bringing stuff in. But um, getting to my point is, is it's been great. It's the, the, for me, I, as you know, um, growing up, you know, hands-on is it's practical application is what it's called. And these kids really um, are learning uh, how to how to work with food and what food is all about, saving the planet, environment, resources, all these different pieces, and it really ties in, and especially the new company that I'm with, they're uh, STEM work qualified. So 
that science, technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics, right. guess what? It's all agriculture. Okay, and, and, and we'll yeah. get to that in a moment. One yeah. of the other, mm -hmm. I think, key pieces to this yes. puzzle uh, are organizations like FFA. 100%. And those are all key partnerships, right? We have FFA, the Grange, um, a lot of other people that we work together, and, and they're educating. It doesn't take one person, right? Um, and we're super excited. The de uh, Department of Ag just got a uh, new coordinator there, an ag literacy person to help support the state uh, pieces. So there's a lot of moving pieces to support ag education and, and the teachers. My wife's a sixth grade science teacher, and all this stuff is fun and, and cool, but at the end of the day, does it meet my standards, my curriculum? And they just honestly don't have, teachers don't have time today. So we're providing the tools. Uh, so the FFA is there to, to help support it. Um, it. I'm super excited, and I've always been optimistic, but right now, currently with uh, ag education, the big need, everybody's supporting it. Um, you see, uh, like even the extension, the university working with their team, uh, Kabner, uh, Marilyn Kirkpatrick just got another because we have a 4-H uh, learning center in Tahoe. They have one now in Alamo. I didn't know if you knew that or not. I did not. Yeah, so they literally Alamo, just, Nevada. Yeah, Alamo, Nevada. Great friend of mine down there. Uh, whenever I'm down there, Varlin Higby, he's the commissioner down there. He just signed an MOU for renewable energies on the Pinion Juniper. We'll get into that rabbit hole later, but... Uh, he's super amazing. So that Alamo, they, uh, I don't know if you know Marilyn Kirkpatrick. Of course. I, I just threw it out there. You know, everybody, she's amazing. Big, she is amazing. Big uh, ag uh, supporter and they had some property uh, opportunity to get it. And now they have a, a 4-H uh, learning center uh, right there in Alamo. And so all of uh, the kids from Las Vegas can go there and, and learn about agriculture and and. Uh, it started out a little slow, and as you know, MK was like, we need to get buses there. And the kids, uh, the excitement and what they learned. I, I've never fished before. I never touched water before. It was, it was, a, it was awesome uh, okay, to see that. So you brought yeah. up the magic five-letter word, water. Water, the yes. The state of Nevada. Yes, um, yes. Oh, uh, my gosh. Your, your thoughts on uh, this uh, Supreme Court ruling? Yeah. Uh, waters of the U.S. or, I mean. Uh, no, no, the, oh, the, the, the one the here in the state. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. The yeah. state engineer is the one in charge. Yes, and I think that's, I, I think the dichotomy of water and resources, we all know, not pointing fingers, uh, it's an issue, right? Um, and what I see in the agricultural um, arena industry, if you will, is being smarter with what we have, right? And working alongside with uh, the engineer or in saying, what can we do? And you see a big resurgence of regenerative farming. I don't know if you're yes. familiar with that. That's the phrase out there in Fallon. And we've had a ton of workshops and I'm seeing a lot of people on both sides of the fence that never been talking to before. that are like, hey, we need to work this out whether it's natural resources or water engineering, what can we do to, to make this work, right? Well, one of, the, one of the things is, you know, all of this water is over allocated. And so just getting to the reality of, you know, how much resource do we actually have? Right. And how many people have rights to it? And how do we buy that back so that everybody is being treated fairly? 100%, and I, and I appreciate that. Yeah, that's the biggest, you know, use it or lose it, right? The the senior water right holders, the all the all the all the importance of that. I think we're gonna have to model it. We're gonna have to figure out what because back in the day where we had X amount of water, right? We don't have the same amount as we have today. And really researching that that perspective. Well also you know, okay, I mean, and I, I'm, I, I'm a keep I, it simple I, guy, you know. You I, know? I, I don't mean, wanna lay this on you. Sure. But sure, I mean absolutely. you know, they they were selling uh, water rights on the Reese River, you know to the folks back east. Right, I know. Uh, if you've never been to the Reese River Valley and seen that river, right. it gets to be at least four inches deep sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. I know. Well, and I <laughs> and they were I, selling waterfront property. Well, and I think I think that, I mean, if we all know, I, I 100%, you know, and it's, it's at least we're to the table and we're discussing it, right? And that's- Well, and we have the science. 100%, and yeah, that- because we didn't really have that before. No, no. I mean, and, along with other things, but I mean, we didn't have the science before. Well, and, and, and quite frankly, uh, Nevada water law is is awesome, you know, and it's been around for a couple of days, whether it's decreed water and, Al, you know, Alpine water decree, you know, and federal rulings and stuff like that. But I think we're going to have to definitely, to answer your question, work together. Um, but I think uh, in, my, in my perspective is to see what resources we have and what can we do with them, you know, and that brings me up to like hydroponics and, and regenerative farming and really evaluating how, how, we can, how we can support that. But yeah, it's, it's definitely an issue um, 
you know, and, and seeing what resources we do have and what we can use. You know, it was just, I had mentioned Varlin Higby and his pinion junipers. We have a ton of them. It's like mesquite in Texas. We're going to make biofuels out of that. We were talking one day, and it's, it's amazing how things move, just moves along. But water is going to be an issue, and um, we're, we're going to have to get to the table and talk for sure. Okay, what about inter, inner basin transfers? Yes. Are you okay with that? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Um, I, I, it just depends, you know, and, and, you know, the philosophy of everybody saying that the water is all connected. And, I mean, there's, we have science to back it up, and I think we need to lean back on that science and really look at you know, what is available, how the water is allocated. And, you know, quite frankly, I mean, the building industry, you know, how it all works together. And I, I, I think we're at the table and we're, the, the questions are hard. Well, you know, you know one, mean, of the, one of the topics that's come up in this program with uh, Carl Rohrink, for mm -hmm, example, yes. is talking about, you know, the, the water in eastern Nevada. Sure. That the Southern Nevada Water Authority was going to pipe down to Las Vegas. Sure. That's off the table, at least for the foreseeable future. Sure. But then the minute that happens, suddenly uh, Utah is looking at pulling water from their side. It's the same water. So, you know, does it stay in Nevada or does it end up in Utah? Yeah, that's that's the, the, the dilemma that we're looking at. And I think it's really important. I mean, you know, talking with like Mark, you know, uh, Amade and a few others that have been here for a while and Pete Gokachia and, and they the, who is really the I king know, of water. I know. And it's amazing to hear it. I mean, we could spend I mean, I, I need to land the plane, obviously, on conversations sometime, but very passionate about what he is and very familiar with it. I mean, and then Doug Busselman, I mean, he's brilliant at, you know, he's been, I think, with this system about 47 years now. Which is amazing. Yeah. He's got to be the longest serving uh, <laughs> in, in the country. I think, I think yeah, and he uh, brings to the table as far as looking at it. So I'm optimistic and sure, I mean, it's going to be an issue, uh, the water deal, but I, I think we can we can work it out. It's just going to, it's going to be, I mean, just like anything else, you know. We, we, you we, know it's going to be war. I mean, uh, we, yeah, I know, we can work I it know. out. What, but it's what's, gonna... the, what's the saying? The water, you know, for fighting the whole bit, you know, but yeah, so. Whiskey is, is for drinking, water is for fighting. For fighting. Exactly. Let's, on that note, yeah. let's take a break. We'll sure. come right back and talk about your new gig okay. after this timeout. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com. Tollsdevelopment.com. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators. From the exotic to the everyday. Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Find your fortune during the $150,000 Lucky Fortune giveaways at Tamarack Casino. Cash and free play giveaways every Thursday and Saturday, including $5,000 cash guaranteed and $40,000 in grand finale giveaways. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Woody Worthington. Uh, originally, as I said earlier in the program, <laughs> with the Nevada Farm Bureau. Now you are Director of National Partnerships with Green Our Planet. Who and what is this? Well, um, yeah, it's, I'm like six days into it, so I, I would assume I'm still onboarding. But uh, super amazing program. Uh, Kira and uh, her partner, Kim, uh, they were filmmakers. Uh, back in the day, I mean, filming in the Amazon and all that, and they landed in this place called Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and they uh, they went to a school and they saw a garden that needed some support. And they said, "Well, let's get this going. Let's you know, flant, you know, let's 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 uh, let's start that." So they started one school. They started another school. Now they are the largest uh, school garden providers as well as um, hydroponics in the nation. So it just kind of blossomed from there. They provide, um, so the company that I work with, uh, we provide hydroponic systems as well as uh, Garden Connect is what it's called uh, for all the schools across the nation. But what's super exciting is Nevada, uh, we can provide 
every single school um, uh, a hydroponics and school gardens with some help of the um, uh, the people we just got a um, some more funding for that to support that so that just rolled out so we need a we need to land about 138 <laughs> schools uh, with these kits but what's what's good about them is they're just not here's a kit and have a nice day they come with curriculum uh, stem uh, stem curriculum as well as the national um, science standards it is approved by my wife she's a sixth grade science okay. teacher well, so there you go super most important, important part yeah, yeah well you know and you know you know how that goes that relationship but um, she she definitely looked Looked at the program and um, said it was it was needed, right? Uh, it's project-based learning. The kids uh, get to be able to, like in kindergarten, they start. This is a seed. This is how it grows. Um, all the way to fifth grade, uh, they have a thing that is called uh, the farmers market. So the schools, uh, they just have one in Vegas. Uh, they had 60 schools come together for a farmers market, so that at that point the kids are knowing how to grow them and how to uh, sell and process in the finance perspective of, of, of doing a farmer's market and the turnout was was awesome. Um, and You know, it's so interesting because you can cover so many different bases exactly uh, within a program like this because not only is it the, the fun and pleasure right. of growing your own food right. and then being able to sell it and in some cases give it away, but you also learn the business aspect, which is another whole sector. Right, and that's, we call them farmpreneurs. So it's kind of a catchy little phrase, but at, at the end of the day, the kids absolutely love it. They're connected, but now they're really connected. It's project-based learning, and, and one thing that grew from it, I mean, uh, there's- Pardon the pun. Yeah, right, right? <laughs> uh, the thing that grew from it, yeah, let us grow, um, but at the end of the day, <laughs> Uh, what what's amazing about it is is the kids are are, are working hands on whether it's hydroponics or garden. I was at Silver Springs, um, Ella, our middle school. They do uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and uh, Silver Sage uh, Middle School. And it, I had a long day. It was it was a tough day. It was sixteen and a half hours of flying, and I ended up landing at that school and. Uh, I'm very excited to see the younger kids really kind of giving them, if we give them the tools, what they can do with them. Um, and the, they were, we were at the garden and I was watching the kids and one kid was handing out tools, the next kid was raking leaves and the other kid was pulling, weed, uh, pulling weeds. And I was like, man, I gotta fill out, I gotta figure this dynamics out. So I asked a student, I said, how did you get that job for handing out the rake? And she goes, well, I did really good on my, on my school, um, you know, my, my assignments and for like two weeks straight and did really good on my test. So I said, oh, I see, I'm kind of figuring it out. And then the, the, the kids, they're, and they're raking and he's like, well, I did okay on my assignments. I did okay on my testing, but I'm gonna work harder so I can, I can, I can hand out the tools. And the kid down below is pulling weeds and he's like, you don't wanna know what I did on my test. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I, I did not do a lot of my homework, but I will. So that little bit of a moment really connected the dots and it was an opportunity. I talked to the, the okay, teacher. I, I, okay. I gotta cut you off Okay, here, perfect. Yeah. But I'll bring you right back okay. after this timeout. Story County is leading Nevada. Home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across Northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low, and our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way, because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Imagine a magical garden 
that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to carsoncitygreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Back on Nevada Newsmakers with Woody Worthington. He's the Director of National Partnerships uh, for Green Our Planet. You got a gift for me? Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> it says, uh, don't drop the beat. So uh, it's- And it's a beat root. It's a beat root. On a mug. With the, with, the, with the headphones on. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a little token of our appreciation. Thank you for, for uh, allowing us uh, to come here. It's a pleasure. Yeah. You, know, you know what the biggest thing I think that comes out of this program is that with kids growing their own food, um, that they will eat things that they wouldn't have even dreamt of trying if mom had brought it because they grew it. And I thank you for the work you're doing. It's fabulous. Absolutely, yeah, Green Our Planet, uh, and it's a dot .orger, so if you yeah, go to Yeah, greenourplanet.org. Dot org. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for your time, and I appreciate Come back. it. Oh, I'll, I'll, I and think bring I'll be food back. next I'll, time, I'll okay? I'll some food, yes. Plenty of lettuce. I know the kids can grow it, that's for sure. <laughs> and we'll be right back. 7 at 7 is a newscast built for your smartphone. It's a 7-minute newscast available every weekday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. at LVRJ.com. We don't waste your time and we give you the day's top stories. We at the RJ have noticed some similarities between us and a certain BTS character, RJ. Plus the latest in Las Vegas business, weather, health, and entertainment news. 7 at 7 streaming now on your smartphone. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over one in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suites. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers. You can catch us online 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com or you can download the podcast wherever you like to get your podcasts. We'll see you on the next broadcast.